LaRouche. 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 Is that French? The name LaRouche will be used as a word that is synonymous with a certain type of film. And nobody can ever take that name away. And the thing I hate about working with uh, either one of the LaRouche, LaRouche, LaRouche brothers is uh, basically neither one of them know what they're doing. If you can know something just for that one split second, And it makes it all worthwhile. Uh, my brother <laughs> doesn't really have the same opinion about that as I do. He's 12 minutes older. I mean, fuck! Things are a lot easier if you don't deal with the dumb son of some bitches, especially ones that are 12 minutes younger than you. While I was already out here on stepping around, looking around, sucking on my mother's tit, he was still in the goddamn stomach, just kicking around like a little pussy, you know? I'm supposed to take shit from a dickhead like that? If there were one thing that I could do in this world, it would be to hire someone to, um, to kill him. I get a call one day on my answering machine from Greg LaRouche. And he says, Mr. Fitzgerald, he says, uh, my brother and I have got a project that we think is right up your alley. Working with Fitzgerald was just too much for me to take. You're only around once on this wacky ride, uh, and I basically just don't have the time to deal with such a fuck up like Fitz. A man whose priorities are so out of whack. That's why I love living in Los Angeles, you know, because we get to like play tennis in the morning, go to the gym, relax, work out, then at the end of the day have a beer. Remember to contact, called him, said it, he set us up with produce, film producer Jim Fitzgerald, who at the time was working on that, that horrible bomb, uh, uh, something about a boat. I made a lot of money in this business, had some good investments, had some bad investments, but I always put my money where my mouth was, and that's in my work, okay? I had just finished making um, rice eaters. And uh, a woman <laughs> came up to me on the street and said, hey, I thought it was great. I thought it was unbelievable. I think you're brilliant, uh, la-di-da. <sighs> but the problem with those types of situations is that you know they don't understand what you were trying to do. <laughs> Uncle Ben's rice. It's the perfect rice in minutes, don't you think? So you like Uncle Ben's rice, huh? Yeah, I think it's deliciously good. So you think it's deliciously good, huh? Well, let me tell you something, honey. I hate the fucker. Let me tell you something. You don't know deliciously good until you're on your back in a field full of rice that you know you can't eat. <laughs> I mean, don't you get it? I mean, it ain't about rice, man. And when you're in fucking Saigon watching your, your fucking best buddy getting blown to bits in the middle of a fucking rice field, I mean, fuck the fluffy rice. I mean, back in, um... Uh, you don't have time to think about rice. You know what rice was to us? Do you? It was the fucking Dukes, man. It's a fucking war going on out there, man. It's a fucking war. I mean, it's fucking hunt. It's kill or be killed because there ain't no fucking laws in war, motherfucker. You know what it is? I don't fucking know what it is. Fucking, what, what's this world coming to? Uncle Ben's converted rice has brought me nothing but fucking pain. Pain and agony. <laughs> <laughs> so, should I only make one serving for tonight? On Rice Eaters with Greg, his, well, there was a, a major experience in uh, egomania uh, from his point of view. Uh, 
insisting that the Vietnam vet uh, be obviously too young uh, to have been in Vietnam. All my life I'd been, I, I'd felt like I hadn't been able to really hone my skills as an actor and, until I met these LaRouche brothers and they, they were bitter, they were you know, harsh and in fact they, uh, they're downright cruel sometimes. I don't care if it's fucking stupid! Shit off. No, working for them was was never a joyous experience, and uh, uh, all I can say is that I met some cute chicks on the set. I mean, that's all I can say about their movies. A lot of good actors and actresses fall into bad parts. Um, I, I actually think it uh, shows a quite a quite a test of my abilities to be able to control myself and. Uh, perform under such trying circumstances as working with either of those two. I'm sorry that you don't like me, but the fact is, is that I already like you. Oh, come on. Got a tool here that needs it. Needs it hard. <laughs> Any kind of sexual advances that were made to me as an actress or other actresses, I think they should be warned that uh, these men are scum. I've got a private jet that'll go to the... Oh. I am walking off the set. You can call my agent and tell him I am through. Fuck you! I don't give a shit! Fuck you! I don't give a hell! I don't have to put up with this. Baby! <gasps> what do you call me? I don't hate! I can't tolerate anything that would conflict with whatever I want. You've kept me back in that hellhole for 18 years, and you expect me to walk out like nothing happened. Well, I can't. I've got things to take care of now. They pushed me too close to the edge. Too close, too close. Listen, Grease, you're never gonna get away with it. Why don't you just give me the fucking gun? They'll punch you down and find you. You got it? You shut up or you'll get it in the head so fast that you'll... Your head'll... You, you'll die. Come on, Grease, let's go! Come on, Queen. Do something. Hey, I'm in charge here. I, you hand over the jewel, McLean. You never get the jewel. The project Cincinnati or Bust was at a time period in my life where I was hurting, where I was aching, and I think Cincinnati or Bust shows that hurt, shows that pain with the characters that are involved in it. What do I think of when I hear the name Zach LaRoche? Well, really, I guess you could compare it to what a Jew thinks when they hear Hitler, you know? Or what fucking JFK thinks when he hears Oswald or CIA, you know, whichever opinion you want to believe.